Marsha Blackburn from Tennessee, a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee. Senator, welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, silence on the part of Kamala Harris. That is an interesting one. Uh, considering what this means for women, your colleague in the Senate, Lindsey Graham, joined us top of the last hour and suggested this. Listen. That's what I want people to know. If you served in Afghanistan, you should be proud of what you did for our country and the Afghan people. On your watch, the Taliban was held at bay, al-Qaeda was on the run, and women had a better life. So we're told that she will be present, uh, Kamala Harris, with the president when he speaks just over an hour from now. But we haven't heard from her yet. And this is a, a, a dire, horrible moment for the women right. of that country and what they now face. Oh, Sandra, it is heartbreaking to me. I've been on the ground in Af Afghanistan, and I have talked with women that are there. And of course, we know the State Department had put a lot of effort into making life better for women in Afghanistan, as have many of us in Congress. And here is what we know is women are already being raped. They're being forced into marriages with Taliban fighters. They're being pulled from their villages. We know that women are not allowed to go to school or have businesses. There have been pictures of the Taliban going in and painting over the pictures of women at salons. And women who have served in government or worked at the U.S. Embassy they are very vulnerable and I am hopeful that we get them out this did not have to be this way there was a plan that President Trump and Secretary Pompeo had in place it was conditions based it was based on threat assessments and Joe Biden decided he was going to ignore the advice of the military and he was going to do this his way and this is a disaster he has proven he is a weak leader and Kamala Harris mm. is proving she is a weak leader because there is no support for the Afghani people who have risked their lives. You know, uh, Mark Thiessen brought up a very good point, Senator. It's Trace Gallagher. Thank you for joining yes. us. Uh, brought up a very good point last hour. He was talking about Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, who, when he was being interrogated in Guantanamo Bay several years ago, said, look, we don't have to beat the Americans. We simply have to wait the Americans out. Well, now yes. they have waited the Americans out. The Taliban now controls Afghanistan. And the question now is how long before al-Qaeda reforms, regains strength? And Trey Yangst, our correspondent in the Middle East, made a very good point saying, you know, this is a very significant 9-11, the 20th anniversary, and if you don't yes. think that terrorists want to make some kind of optical show, you are poorly mistaken. Well, and you're right about that, Trace. And bear in mind, the Chinese Communist Party has already come out supporting the Taliban and saying they will recognize them. We know that China has been very much uh, supportive of the Taliban and what their efforts are. We worry about the ties with Iran and with Russia. And of course, you're allowing a terrorist hotbed to continue and God bless these Gold Star families and every man and woman who has served in Afghanistan and has served in the war on terror to make this nation safe and to keep our people safe. And of course, we worry about General Milley's comments about the elevated terrorist threat. All of these things are showing that Joe Biden as Secretary Gates had said, he's been wrong about every foreign policy decision for the past 40 years, and he's showing this again in Afghanistan, and he needs to be very forceful today, admit he's made a mistake, and change course. And I just pray for our troops. We've got some from Fort Campbell that are going in over mm -hmm. there, and I pray for them. I hope that as one of a uh, retired Marine I was talking to earlier today said, I hope this isn't an ambush. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we are able to oh. secure that place, get out our SIVs, get our men and women, our American citizens, our allies who have worked there, our Afghani partners, mm -hmm. these vulnerable women who have worked in government. I am hopeful there is a plan and we can get them out because obviously Joe Biden did not have an exit strategy, but the Taliban, they had one for us. And Trace, as you said, they've told us from the get-go, we might have the clocks, but they had the time. 
Joe but Biden is a weak leader, and they know it. Senator, but we can't just stand by and watch this happen. Uh, the the no, president's got to unveil some sort of plan. He's been meeting with the, yes. his national security advisors, how to protect the homeland uh, here in the United States. You know, We're waiting an update uh, from the State Department and the Pentagon this hour. But we are going to hear from the president. And I, I would ask you, too, uh, Senator, we obviously the question was where was Joe Biden? Where's Kamala Harris? Yeah. Where where's Jen Psaki? Over the weekend, all of this was happening. They were silent. In fact, the president remained at Camp David until just a couple uh, uh, about an hour ago. Why 3:45 Eastern time? Do you think that he's going to address the nation? I should say he's going to address the world because our allies are going to be listening to closely to how we proceed. Why? Why 3.45 in the afternoon, do you think? Uh, maybe they want to get it out before the newscast, the 6 o'clock newscast start. Mm. I, I don't know, Sandra, but he has waited too long already to weigh in on this. We started getting briefings last week, late last week, and we have continued to follow that through. And we've also talked to people that have recently served in Afghanistan and have returned. They've been incredibly concerned about the ramp up as the provincial capital started to fall around Afghanistan. They're a, they started to have concerns that they were expressing. So uh, there needs to be a plan. There needs to be a plan for safe passage. You know, we have people that are all around Kabul who have worked with the embassy and have been sources for us, they need safe passage. You're going to have to have a way for safe passage to get these individuals to the airport and to get those planes in the air. And right now, it is absolute mayhem, absolute mayhem on the ground. And mm -hmm. we have worked to get some individuals out. And if there are any Afghan Americans who are concerned, they live in Tennessee, call my office. We have caseworkers that are working on issues. And we are just intent on safe mm -hmm. passage and being able to save the lives of these individuals because the Taliban is already mm -hmm. going door to door. They have said they are going to slaughter these people. About, about an hour and 37 minutes, 35 minutes away from hearing from the president, Senator. And finally, I just want to get your take on that. What do you want to hear? Do you expect him to point fingers at the previous administration? Or do you expect him maybe to own this so that we can move forward and come up with some kind of realistic solution on the ground? He needs to own it. And he needs to have a plan for how we are going to provide safe passage. And then he needs to have a plan for how we were, are going to protect the homeland. We are coming up on a very significant anniversary. And Trace, you have covered these events for a long time. And you know how dates of significance are important. Mm -hmm to the Taliban and to Al Qaeda and to these extremist groups as they feel they are executing a jihad. We want this country safe. We want our citizens safe. We are praying for safe passage and safety for these. And oh, God bless our troops that once again are standing up to do what appears to be an impossible job. Yep. Senator Blackburn, uh, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Senator. Yeah,